Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. I have a very special episode today. My guest today has been a writer and director of adult material for six years with a special love for filming horror porn. He has won countless awards, including AVN's Best Director last year and Best Picture this year for his movie Grinders. Let's welcome Ricky Greenwood. Hello. Hello. It's, it's always weird to hear all those things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All your accolades. Yeah. It's like when they do that. Like my Erica, my PR, sometimes she's, she has to put them and she put them on. It's like, oh, that's a lot. Okay. It's yeah. Just like, it's, it's nice though, isn't it? To like, to hear that because you're like, wow, I have done a lot. Yeah. With my career. But, they, but sometimes you don't realize that until it's over. Mm. I, feel, I feel that you don't look, you don't look back. You don't, and, 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 you know, like to go back, like. And I said that multiple times when I win the best, my, my goal was to win best director. And like, mm-hmm. and I was working hard for that and I was expecting to win it like later on and just like older. And it's just like, and when I win it, it just kind of like, oh, what else I'm doing right now? Yeah. It's kind of like I win. It's like, what else? And, and also we realized that like, I was like, that's it. <laughs> And, and I was unlucky to win it when it was like the pandemic. So like he was yeah. at home. You at home? Oh no! Oh, that's true. So you couldn't go up on stage. No. So Aww. I was at Joanna's angel house. Was like so I, all yeah. the friends of mine were there. But like it's just like so you also get like you work and you say like, oh okay. I was happy to win it, and I yeah. was I'm very grateful to win it, and it helped me for other stuff after that. But like I was like. <laughs> it's kind of like you work so hard and like yeah. that's why I said to people something it sounds stupid when you say that but like don't put too much like hype on it because I don't I'm not sure the journey is equal the reward of it yeah 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 because you you have to to get that I talked with Seth Gamble about it last time you put so much of your life to get that that at some point you just like Oh, it's a trophy that you got. And like mm-hmm. a lot of like people tell me was telling me that. Robbie D used to tell me that a lot. So like, if you want a trophy, grab one of mine in the living room. It's just you just like that's it. You yeah. put it in your room. Because yeah. it does that would be the same thing. Winning yeah. a trophy would get one of them. But Well, you know, as somebody who's never won an AVN award, and <laughs> I know I never bring this up, um, that's wonderful to hear. So I still feel like I have like the hope and the journey ahead of me. <laughs> I definitely haven't had like that, you know, anticlimactic uh, um, experience of like getting it and being like, Ugh. but then you got to, so then, but then you won um, best movie or grand reel as they yeah. call it now for grinders this past AVN and you got to go up on stage yes. for that. So what was that like? Oh, it was, it was the different, it, it, both of them is unique and I have memory, good memories of both of them and, and I'm happy to dip like on stage when everybody's cheering for you and like, and like you, uh, um, you go there and like people are ha- really happy for you. And that's, a, that's a different feeling. And I, I never, I'm the type of person who never prepared anything. So like I go there, like meaning the speech and stuff. And so I had nothing prepared. So like my, my speech was kind of all over the place, but like, uh, it was just happy to have all my friend too. Everybody who works in the movie was on stage with me. And if, if, and you have people that really care for you and love you, cheering for you and being happy. That's a different feeling. It's, it's just yeah. like, it's, it, I think going on stage is, it's, it's, I think that's where you want you to, to have people. And, and, you know, you, I don't know if it's the same thing for you, but you, you work in your kind of group of people. Mm-hmm. You know, and you get into your, you have the same uh, crew, family yeah. that you work with, and you live in that bubble. You t- talk to those studio and those producers, but you don't really f- know how people feel outside outside that bubble. Yeah. You don't really know if people really care for you or like, or really likes you or something. So like having, <laughs> yeah. having, having, pe- going on stage and people really cheering for you yeah. and clapping and standing up for you. It's a different feeling. Especially someone like you who works so much. I mean, do you go, do you even go to a lot of like conventions or industry parties or anything like that? It's, I go to some of them, mm-hmm. but I don't have really have time. Sometimes I'm working early to like, like yesterday I was like, it, it's sad, but like, it was like, yesterday I was exhausted for all the week that I have. And I have a big movie coming up in two weeks. So like mm-hmm. I'm buried under like, like a storyboard and like, and, and shut list and call sheet. So yesterday I was like exhausted and I was like, I had to go to T word. And I said, like, I was like, oh, 
I said, I can't, I'm too tired. I, I really should. The smart way was to stay home, sleep at night. At 9 a.m., 9.30, I was in bed sleeping. So yeah. I was like, I need to sleep and get my energy going. And so I said, nobody will know. So like yeah. I said, I stay home. At like 11.30, I get a text from like a, a model saying, you win Best Director. And I was like, oh. <laughs> no, everybody knows that I was not there. <laughs> this is like, so I was like, I was like, no. Did someone accept it for you? Yeah, someone accept. I don't know who, but like, so I think it was someone from uh, Adult Time. Okay. Gamma was there okay. To, yeah. Okay. To accept it for me. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, I was, in my head, nobody will know. It's just yeah. like, it's just like, it was like, oh, you were there. Oh, yeah, I was there. I just miss you. No. Yeah. Like, no, you clearly were not there. Yeah. It clearly, like, now everybody knows that. That's I was, funny. But, but like, yeah, I tried to go, but like, again, it's just sometime. Because I work so much in like, and sometimes project or them, even if I'm not on set, some project require me to be like, do some prep and some mm -hmm. story, like I said, storyboard shot list and like, uh, so like, a meeting. So like, it's just like all those things put together and make me that I'm, I'm maybe not on set, but I'm working. Yeah. And, and it's also like another very hard moment. So like, I wish I could do more of like those events. I do some of them, but like, I wish that I can do more, but it's very hard. Do you, how do you combat burnout? It's always very close, I will say. Like, I had one, I, I feel that in my experience, maybe I'm totally wrong, I'm not a doctor and everything. In my experience, you always, I get it once and you realize that when it's too late most mm -hmm. of the time, you know, that's, that it happened to me when I, in my past work. Uh, I was working, I was doing a, a, a podcast and I was doing like a fest, movie festival and it's a long movie festival that it was like three three weeks. So I was working during the day. I will do my podcast live from that movie festival and I was also a programmer for that festival. A program, I used to program movie for them. So I will also at night I will do some like uh, interviews with guests or like be introducing films. So like for three weeks I will like barely sleep and I would always work and when you work for a movie festival you work like two three months ahead looking at movies and writing text for the, the the program and all that stuff so you already have a lot of work done and like this intense part of work and uh I just I forgot everything that happened that three weeks for a month I just like it's blank it's empty and it just I end up out of that with like like burned out completely. It's just like I was no energy, everything. And I said, okay, that's that's how I'd feel to get a burnout. And now I always try to not go there, but I'm I'm a workaholic, so I'm always pushed too much. So I try to not getting there. But mm. like sometime I will say, okay, guys, we need I need two weeks of just like vacation, and I'm I I myself and take two weeks of vacation. But it's hard. How often do you go on vacation? Not that much. Uh, once <laughs> once a year. <laughs> Normally, it's in December because I don't shoot in December, like yeah. during uh, Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I try to do, I have like, we. I try to take uh, two weeks during like uh, at the end of June. So like when uh, the 4th of July arrives, so like it's like most, most of the time I don't shoot those days. So that week, week and a half, we keep it away from that and uh, Christmas because of Christmas, New Year's, everybody is out of town. So it's very hard to shoot. And you also have like AVN, XBS coming. So you also have like peoples are out of town. So like that time, normally I'm not shooting, but like for AVN, for example, um, you end up going to Vegas. So like you're not really on vacation because you go to the yeah. expo and do like- It ain't vacation. Yeah, <laughs> so like it's not really a vacation. But, no, not at all. Yeah. How, um. I mean, do you ever like resent how much work you have or do you like constantly find that you're in that place of gratitude or do you sometimes struggle and think, you know what, like I really should cut down on these jobs? It's, it's sometimes I dare, like for me, it's also more of like, it's, it's, a, it's my, it's, it's hard because it's between heart and like business. Mm -hmm. So like, for me, I said, yeah, I can, I can just not take the day, but also have the same crew that I have for years that I, you know, we have like a, it's like a business. You work like every, uh, we work four times a week all year. Mm -hmm. So like sometime more, depending if we have feature stuff, but we guarantee, we have a guarantee of four days a week that we're working for different stuff. So like, 
So I, I, if I cut for me, I say, okay, I'm going on vacation, but like now I'm kind of like, it, I feel bad to like cut them days of work and money, mm -hmm. income and stuff like that. So in some, for some people that's meaning like if I cut a week, that means that like now they're short for their rent or, or mm -hmm. this or that. So like, so I try to keep as a business, like if I was really working for a business, meaning that like I have three, four weeks of vacation that I will take during the year and the rest of the time I'm, I'm, I'm we're working as a business basically. So do you, but so then that must mean that you have members of your crew that pretty much only work for you because I know that you also, at least in the past have used people like gaffers and stuff like that yeah. to work for other people because I've tried to fuck a book them and they were booked <laughs> with you. But now, now, now that gaffer is almost all the time with me, but like, yeah, uh, it's yes. I, for me, that's how it work. We know that like I, it's very, for me, the only problem that I have that I resent having so much work is like, I cannot accept fun project all the time. Meaning that like, someone will call me and be like, like for example, this year, I had to call out the studio. I said like, if you want me to do a feature for you this year, you need to telling me in January, because after that it's over. At the end of January, all the people I've put their feature on, and I have no room for new stuff. So that's mm -hmm. why that's why sometimes it's very frustrating because now you have like someone, oh, I have this new project and I want to do, can you do it? I already commit to uh, to people. And then that's why for me it's very frustrating because if someone cancel and we have to kill the day, that day will not be reshoot until next month. Yeah. Because I don't my 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 month is full. So like so that means that like you lose the day, you lose the scene. So like, and I, it's a struggle for me because I try to to keep the weekend off for the crew mm -hmm. and keep, keep like, I, so basically that the reason why we only doing four days is because I don't want the crew to work on a weekend. And mm -hmm. I, and we try to get one day during the week that like, uh, we don't have like, uh, we can do the doctor appointment, all the stuff that needs to be done during the weekday. Yeah. So like, so that's why we're doing that. I can, and, and obviously we don't want to over, work and like be, yeah because the days can be really long yeah it's not like i think what a lot of people don't understand is that you know a lot of times like porn sets are not eight hours yeah it's not like a nine to five it's like i mean there's sometimes you know over 12 hours if you're yeah. axel braun they're 26 hours <laughs> yeah. like for me i cut that down like yeah. for, like for me we don't like my my a rule is like 12 hours max yeah. and and we can go to 14 meaning that the the makeup in the morning and the um, the wrap mm -hmm. so like so like so those two like that will that well out to 14 but shooting thing time it's a maximum of 12 and like and if if the people that like, were there in the morning for the makeup artists normally I will send her home yeah uh, be, before 12 hours and I will probably uh, probably the actress, unless it's a feature and she's the main, probably the actress will be after the day and after that she will go home. I will do all her stuff and after that send her home. Yeah. So, so the, you try to, because I would do this too when I would shoot features, I really tried to schedule it to make sure that everybody was on set for the least amount of time possible. Exactly. Yeah. So like if, if a model comes in, like I get all of her stuff done and then she can go home. Yeah. Um, because I, I've heard from a lot of people that they're just like sitting on set for hours. And sometimes that can't be helped because sometimes yeah. the way that you shoot it, something has to be at day, next thing has to be at night. Like you can't help it. Yeah, and some sometimes also <laughs> like, sometimes I will like call the girl, like I try to change it, but sometimes I will say, okay, your call time is 3 p.m. And now we get some time, some time late. We are behind schedule and now like we, I'm an hour or two hour late. So now you're at three and now you will shoot at five. So you will probably have two hours sitting around doing yeah. nothing because you have to, you have to wait till your turns coming. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah. but like, I try my best to avoid it. I, early in my career, I was like, it was very hard because it's also like experience change, you know, like, mm -hmm. it's just like, early in my career, I was overshooting. So like, yeah, I was, that's a big thing. I was covering everything, every angle, close up, extreme close up, and I was like wide, two shot, and, and I was shooting like a lot. And they, and at some point, you realize it would experience that like, they don't need that. They don't yeah. just pick it up from here, just do yeah. that. Just, they don't need that. Do you edit your own movies, or do you oversee the editing at all? Uh, it depends. Like uh, all the small scene that I will do, like the the regular stuff, I don't. I, mm -hmm. I just shoot it, send it to them. I look at the footage after when I put it on the drive before I send it, but I don't like, uh, I don't overlook at the editing. I don't, I, I will watch the scene when it's released 
And if something's bad, I will tell them. It's like, this is like, okay, guys, be careful next time with the sound or this and that. But I don't, I don't really overview the editing. I don't have time for that. Yeah. But for uh, feature, yes, feature, I will go I'll look at the editing and I will look, I give them notes and I will overdo. And if it's a movie that I really, really care about, like the, like for example, Under the Veil, like I was like, it was very important for me that it was edited the right way. So I edit Under the Veil. Mm. But like, but like, it's very rare that I do that. It's depending of the movie. Yeah. Like, like the bargain, for example, was a personal movie of mine. I did the editing for the bar bargain, but it's it's I cannot, and especially now, if I decide to do that, it will be very problematic because it will take me a month. I will have to be a month out of work to just edit like three weeks yeah. just to do the editing. Yeah. And it's, so it's, it's it takes a lot of my time now. That like it's getting more and more hard to do that. Yeah. So how did you actually start an adult? Because I know you started off working in mainstream. Yes. So how'd that transition happen? Uh, it was like for me, it was like the the original story is that like I was uh, working in um, for TVs, so little stuff. I was working for a show called uh, Box Office. It's kind of the equivalent of Entertainment Tonight in Quebec. So like mm -hmm. it was like a show that like who were doing interview with stars and, and they have that. And they also have another movie, another show called Cinerama. So it's just kind of two things that like they were like about revolving about the movie industry. I'm always, always around movies all my life. When I was 16, I was working in a video store and movie theaters. And, and after that, I worked for a, movie, a music station, the MTV, but a French version of MTV. So like, and that company had some movies, things and I work for them and that company get they turn out to be uh working for a license to buy to sh having like a studio ch uh, adult channel mm. so like when and like many people say when you have when you your name is associated with sex a lot of people start to go away from you so like the thing the two channel that I have the movie channel the movie show that I have got canceled because their movie channel for that production company. So like, because I had a contract with them, I work with the, the company at that time. And I didn't really like my experience in the adult industry at that time. I was mm -hmm. like, it was very like, exactly what I was thinking that the industry will be, you know, like it was very like, I'm not professional and it was like, you know, that was not what I was looking for. So like I quit that company when my contract was about to be renewed, I just left. And I just like, I work from like, a, reality TV from different channel. And I helped my friend to, uh, to do some uh, movies. Uh, one of my good friend did a movie called Turbo Kid. I don't know if people know, it's an horror movie. Uh, that I, I work as a third assistant director on that. And I was also some a cameo in it. If people can see me, I have a little part of it. And I was working with him, helping other friends. And a good friend of mine, I do some editing. I used to be an editor, so I, used to, I do editing for friends. And a friend of mine asked me to do um, some movies and short film. And I said, like, I don't do short film. I don't have time. I work too much. I didn't have time to do short film. I think, you know, you let your time go. It's like, it's time for me to put that movie making type of work going away. So like, and, and he said, oh, my, you should do one. You need to, you used, you used to like that. And it's like, I don't have a script. So like, I cannot do it. I don't have a script. I don't have time to write it. So forget about it. Two days later, he came back with a script. They said, you have a script now, so what's your excuse? And I was like, fine, I shoot that movie. That movie did well in festival around and, and get there. And I, I thought I did an, another one, small one. And little by little, I was doing some short film. Mm -hmm. And I met this guy. He's, he's, he was used to be ed, used to do editing for Mile High Media. Okay. He was editing for that. So it, and so we became friends with the circ, festival circuit and like all the short film. And he called uh, John Blit, the, the owner of Mile High, called me and he says, like, listen, I'm looking for a production manager and like uh, one of your friend worked for me and he said that you would be good at it and stuff like that. So I was not really interested to do, but I, I go meet him and they said, like, listen, I did, I, did, I, I work in the adult industry for a bit. I didn't really like it. It's not for me. I explained to you my experience and everything. So, oh, we're not like that at all. We're different. It's just like we're talking about like, big studio porn, not just like uh, st little stuff. And and it was like, listen, I'm working for that movie festival. I have a contract for them. I cannot do anything until August 1st. And we're, we're in, I think it's like 
in end of May. Mm-hmm. So like, so he's just like, I cannot do anything. So I said like, if you're still interested to work with me in August 1st, give me a call and we can open a discussion. And I, in my head, it's over. It's just like, it's like may may just three three months almost that before like two months before like he he call me back he will find his production manager everything will be over I will never hear about it and it will be good on August first I get a phone call it says hey it's John Blit so <laughs> He's persistent. so like hey are you coming to see if you can work for me and just like so like okay fine I'll go and I have like a heart my my person I'm I'm hard I never say no to stuff so like mm-hmm. I just like says so okay so. Yeah, I will go see you. So I go see him. And I was like, okay. So we talk and explain again, same discussion. I tell my same problem that I have. And he said, how much do you want to work for me? And I was like, okay. So I look, look, it's just like, okay. So it's just like, I will give him a number. I will double my salary that I'm making at that time. And it's just like, and like, he will probably say that I'm crazy and just go home and just like. With the, the, it's ooh. the best way to try to get out yeah, of a yeah. job without saying yeah. no is just yeah. over. Yeah, like, over, like, over, over pitchers, pitchers, over price yourself. Yeah, yeah price yourself just, out of the market. Yeah, yeah. so it's that. And I said like, and also I still working for that movie festival. So I need two months spread into the year to vacation. So I can, I can do that. So I said, so I send him the number and he's like, yeah, the money's good. I have to talk to my brother about like the, and my dad about the days off because it could be complete problematic, but the rest of it is good. So you start Monday, and I was like, <laughs> okay. So this is like, I can't, you cannot really say no when the guy agreed to all your new. What's what's your next step after that? Yeah. Just like, so like, so I said, okay, I agree, and I I, I agree. So my, and and I don't know if it's the same thing in the states, but in, in in Quebec you have like three months to you you work and if if it's fit it's okay and after three months they cannot fire you again because you became kind of a permanent employee but like you have no, a three doesn't, doesn't you have, you, have a, you have a three months like period of time that you can get fired in that period of time where mm-hmm. you can you can quit without like so like in my head i was like, okay we'll do the thing three months and after that i will be like it was the and it's not for for me it doesn't work and never left after that day. <laughs> just like, that three month never came, and I, he, and I, but at that time I was just a production manager. So my job it was to like supply, su- looking at what everybody was doing, and like uh, suggesting casting and new way to new way to do movie and stuff. And I was looking at the movie, and I was like, missing something. Some things here is not like what the way we want it. So he said to me, he said like, why do, why don't you do like one movie and just like just do one movie and the same thing as my friend back in the day i don't have time i don't know i haven't have a script and just like and they said like why well, anything you want to shoot and and i'm a huge fan of non-splitation so like i said like oh, uh, of what a non-splitation it's a it's an it's an exploitation film from the 70s that were involved around nuns and and like uh convent and stuff so i'm a huge that fan is of a that. very specific <laughs> niche i've never yeah. heard that before so i'm a huge fan of that so i said it's like did you go to catholic school or something no 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 my grandpa is very catholic but not, not Interesting. my family is not so where did this like obsession with nuns come from i like the aesthetic i like the way that is like it, i like the the story the vibe the critics the, it's also deep and like when you you in quebec we have this very like weird relation with religion Mm. because like Quebec was very religious until the sixties, if I may. And like the, after that, every, all the bad stuff came from the church and the church was very involved in the government and like in school and stuff. And, and, and at some point the Quebec turned around and just kicked them out of everything. Mm. And like, so, so you have that very like bad relation with religion Mm -hmm. and like and the same thing in in uh in those movies you have they always question religion and question like the faith and stuff like that so it's something that i i like to work with and and if you look at the three movies that i did they also questioned that that faith and and it was like so i explained i said this is the type of movie i want and he said to me oh i did one in the past called mother superior and I think you did very well. So like, I think maybe you should, and, and, and with, with his other company, Icon Mail, he has like a forgive me father. That was also something that, that makes money. So he said like, yeah, it could, it could be very successful. So let's see what you can do. So we did the first confession of a sinful nun. And that movie was, I think I got like thinking like 
10, 12 nomination at XBiz, same thing around the same number at AVN. So wait, so where, okay, because are you working in Quebec at the time or are you working here? I was working in Quebec at the time. And so who was in those movies? Were you flying girls out to shoot? No, no, I, I was I was flying in to like in the States to do those So you were, you were filming them in the States? Yeah. Yes, yeah, because yes. I was like, because from my understanding, there wasn't really... The filming normally doesn't happen in Canada. It happens. The, the, the so, so you were working in Canada, flying to the U.S. Yes, to direct it. Yes, then, exactly. Okay. Yes. Were you doing production managing in Canada? Yes, I was production everything there, okay, gotcha. and I was like casting and everything, and gotcha. I moved okay. there to do that. Okay. So, so like that was the time at that time. I was that's what I was doing. We did one movie. I was not planning to do anything anybody anything after that. It was just a show, and like at that time, the director that was working for us will also be there, and I will show them like. To what kind of storytelling we want, what type of movie we want, and stuff like that. So that was be that was the main goal. And like and when all those awards came and nominate not award but nomination and also Confession was one of his most selling DVD that he had. So so like he was like he was still reprinting it after a year. So he was like, oh, what else do you have in mind? You know. So we did. Um, Becoming Elsa it was kind of like a coming of age, double personality that we did with Elsa Jean, mm -hmm. and it was successful. And after that, he asked me to if I have another movie, and I gave him like a talk derby to me. It was a roller derby movie, mm -hmm. lesbian roller derby, and those two movies get very popular. And after the second, the third movie, he said like, "What about you do that full time in Los Angeles?" So like we work on the paperwork and. And all that stuff, and now I arrive here in October 2018. Wow! Yeah. And you haven't left. No, and then now I'm like, and now you get more and more stuff, and they come from that after that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, guys, we're gonna take a quick commercial break, and then we're gonna come back. We're gonna talk about um, a day in the life of Ricky Greenwood, some of his favorite movies that he's done, crazy onset stories, and so much more. So, stick around. We'll be right back. Do you want to be better in bed? Of course you do. Who doesn't? That's why you need to check out Beducated. It's the number one online platform for sexual health and happiness. They offer a unique library of over 100 online courses created by the world's top experts. You can finally learn everything that you need to know about sex and level up your love life within a safe space. No matter your age, gender, sexual orientation, relationship status, or sexual experience, Beducated is for you. I know that a lot of you want to know how you can better please a woman. And now, yes, literally, there is a lesson plan for that. So many women on my podcast say that men need to learn about how to give good oral, which is why you might want to check out Beducated's class on cunnilingus. Or do you want to learn how to make your partner squirt? Yes, there is a right and a wrong way to do that. And Beducated has all of the information you need on the subject. And these are just examples of the beginning of so much content that they have that you can access on Beducated. Right now, you can try all Beducated courses for one day for free. You won't get charged for the first 24 hours and you can cancel it at any time. And once you realize that this is the online course that you can't do without, you can get 40% off of the yearly pass with my coupon code, Holly. They even have a no risk 14 day money back guarantee. You literally have nothing to lose. And what you can gain from the knowledge here will make a huge difference in your sex life. So go to beducate.me to learn more, but do not forget to use my code Holly for your special offer. Or better yet, click the link in the episode description. You can be a better lover, and Beducate can get you there. That's beducate.me, spelled B-E-D-U-C-A-T-E dot M-E. We talk a lot on my podcast about how men really carry the burden of sexual performance when it comes to the bedroom. And sometimes, guys, it's understandable that maybe your equipment isn't working as well as it normally should. If this is the case, Blue Chew is here to help. Blue Chew is a prescription online service that delivers chewable tablets with the same ingredients as Viagra and Cialis for a fraction of the cost. How do they do that? Well, all of their tablets are made here in the USA, prepared and shipped direct, so it's so much cheaper than a pharmacy. 
And the best thing about this is that everything's online. So you don't have to go to the doctor. You don't have to stand in line at the pharmacy. You can do everything from the privacy of your own home and your tablets are shipped to you in a discreet package. All you have to do is go to bluechew.com where you'll be able to consult with one of their licensed medical providers. They will help you find the right prescription for you and you will receive your tablets within days. So if you wanna up your sex life, give Blue Chew a try. Use code HOLLY at checkout when you go to bluechew.com and get your first order for free. All right, we are back. So Ricky, you briefly glossed over, um, you know, working in the adult entertainment industry first, not liking it, leaving and then coming back. Can you tell us about your very first time on a porn set? Like, take us through walking on set, what your expectations were, what it was like. But you mean back in the day? Yeah, back like, in the day, well, the first, very the first, first time first. on set. Oh my God, it was like, it was a movie in Quebec. It was like, it was like a, a show that was called, um, I don't know the English title, but like it was Grandeur Nature. It was like a, a movie that basically you film people having sex in their like, in like, n- regular place like in public okay okay so like so like you will go there and it was like yeah it was i don't know why it was like the people the girls that i had were on drugs the guy was on drugs and he was just like he was like he was like the the place that it, you can tell the guy was struggling and the girl was like completely wasted and stuff and like she had to drink to do the scene and stuff and he's just like and i was like okay, that's really what, like, we're doing here. And he was in a strip club, dirty strip club, and I was like, oh and I was like, oh, my God, okay. So that, like, that not that's not my type of thing. You know, I didn't yeah. really like that. So it was like, for me, I had this vision of, like, porn is just a bunch of girls that they're forced to do porn because they have no money or something like that and they don't so like strange it strange how most people in the world would agree with you on that, <laughs> that, that <laughs> that's but what it, most people think that was that was my perception of it and that was my and then you were proved my right experience on that side, of it yeah. you know so like i was like okay i'm oh. out so like when they asked me to do another season no nah, i listen i don't do that so i did after i did documentary like more like mm-hmm. give and take documentary and little show it was my only experience with a porn set. Mm-hmm. But like when I came to the United States on Under the Veil and before that, when I visit other set for the, to see the, meet the director and everything, I realized that it was not like that at all. Mm-hmm. It was completely different. It just like, it was like everybody was like treated well and everybody's happy. Most of the time I happy to be there. And But I'm always be careful with that because that's my experience of it. Mm-hmm. And and it's also what I bring as a the production manager at that time, and that's what I bring as a producer now. That I make sure that people is safe, that people have food, that people have water, that people are treated well and can respect it and everything. So like, so that's my experience. That's what I try to give to everybody. So like, yeah. But I know that other people don't have that experience. experience. Yeah. Also, so that's why it's always for me. It's always hard to say that. Well, porn is magical and beautiful yeah. <laughs> and great and just say like, come to set and you will have fun because i know that it's not always the case yeah but, it, but like for the most part i will say that's why i said when people ask me that question for the most part if you work with the top tiers of porn you'll be you will have a nice amazing time yeah i mean that's kind of the thing about porn you know people talk about porn and they give it this kind of you know like it's an umbrella and everything's the same in porn and that's the thing like it's not like all porn sets are different. All There's all different kinds of porn. There's all different kinds of directors. So it's, you know, a, a conglomerate of all these different crews and, you know, individuals. So to say porn is this or porn is that is is not accurate either way. To say porn is all great or porn is all bad is not yeah. great. Like it's a mix of all of these things. But people don't really understand that because the only thing that they're fed through mainstream media is that it's all bad. It's all bad. Focus on all the bad stories. I remember when... Hot Girls Wanted came out, the very first one, yeah. um, that was focused on the adult industry in Florida. And we all know that, like, the adult industry in Florida is different than the adult industry in Los Angeles. Yeah. Like, it's very different. There's a lot, It's a lot more amateur there. It's, it's less regulated. At least it was back then. So it's like they took this small little slice of the adult industry, and then everybody saw it and was like, oh, porn is, is terrible, you know? Um, and then, so when they did the Hot Girls Wanted 2, the one that I was in, 
you know, when they first approached me, I was kind of like, I don't know. Like that one you guys did was like not the best. And they were like, no, this is different. We like understand. We, we looked at all the feedback we got from the first one and we understand that there's, there's different kinds and we want to do one about like female empowerment. So, so I agreed to do it. And I actually liked my episode though. I know that people had problems with the episodes after that, but I mean, whatever, but it is like, it is so, cause it's also kind of, I mean, we self-regulate too, which yeah. is, you know, it's great for the people that are good at it, but it's also problematic for the people who are not. So it's like, it's, it's a mixed bag. It's a mixed bag. And it's also, it's, I don't know, it's, it's hard for me to just like, you need to be sensitive to that matters. And mm-hmm. some people are less sensitive. It's also like an industry is like, is in I think now isn't changing. It changed a lot. We talk about it on of hair, but like I think earlier in my career when I start, you still have those old time. I was it called old timer that they yeah. were there for a long time and they work like that and they don't really like my my way of doing things is good and I don't know why I'm changing it and it's just like you don't realize that like yes, but your way makes uncomfortable the new generation of mm-hmm. people. Like, oh, if they don't understand, they don't have their place. And no, maybe you just, it would be easier for you to change that way of doing than like having them change. And it's mm-hmm. just because like, it's important that to make them feel safe. It's important that makes, make sure that like people on set, like, just like, you know, like you, yeah, like you said, you keep them on like uh, on set for 12 hours. I cannot just give them a bottle of water and like a bag of chip. I'm just like, you need to have meal and you need to have food there. You need to have something to snack all the way down. And, and you need to have like a good meal at some point, you know, <laughs> during the day. That just, was literally one of the things that like really blew my mind. Like at first that there were so many directors that didn't feed their crew or the models like at all. Yeah. And that like I could ne- I was like, how can you ask somebody to work for twelve hours and not feed them? Like yeah. that just seems to me the most the most basic thing. And you don't have to get like catering, yeah. you know, but you have to have you know, I would just go to Trader Joe's and get like wraps and salads yeah. and stuff and like big like variety of things that people want to eat and then they're happy. But like it's just so bizarre. That was that was the good thing. That was the good thing with COVID. Mm. It's just that like for a long part when I trying to have meals and stuff like they were like it was hard to do that you will do like you I will buy a, a platter of sandwiches and people will eat that but like getting a meal was different but like when COVID hit one of the rules is like everybody needs to have this individual mm-hmm. pack of food yeah so now we had to order Postmate we have to order yeah. separate food for everybody yeah so like and that stay right now like yeah. they never let go away after that because it was a but like at that time it was easy for us like listen i need to feed them i cannot give them a huge plate of food because like it's everybody put his hands it's dangerous yeah. for covid Dick hands man the yeah. worst was when guys oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> i can't tell you how many times i'd be shooting like some guy be like you know fucking rubbing his dick trying to keep it hard lots of lube and then he's like oh chips <laughs> then it goes back to like jerk i'm like you just no one's now no one's gonna eat that you put your dick hands yeah. in the bag of chips and now it's fucking ruined you just take that with you it's all yours so. that, that, I, I like when they do that too like because like sometimes i will pass my phone to order the food and the guy <laughs> the guy's jerk off so give me the phone and he's just like and he's scrolling around with his, and i can see the fucking lube on my screen it's just like really dude just like can you just wash your hands it's just like and even like even if you ask him to wash his hands i see i see girls sometimes just like on the wall and it's like, really did you do that at your house did you fucking swap your hands on luby hands on the wall or the curtain they, i like when they do that on the curtain it's just like, like oh, it's so God. funny because you know that you're shooting at a porn house that people use a lot when all the doorknobs are greasy yeah. <laughs> like you like cannot open the door because everyone just touch it with their lube hands it's just like everything the floor is slippery it's yeah. just like oh, oh yeah this is like, i remember brad armstrong's house his floor was always like so slippery yeah, from like, like all the lube and all like the squirting movies yeah. that people did there yeah. and he cleaned that place oh, all yeah. the time yeah, like, like, just like he was good at that but can. still man they, it's so hard to get lube out but yes yeah, it's hard to get lube out it's hard also to like you know turn around sometimes like you said like like uh, you shoot and like the guy, the, the crew is there for 12, 14, 16 yeah. hours. So now you end up leaving the house at 3 a.m. And the next crew come at like 9 a.m. So yeah. like, so what is supposed to do? They will 
in the middle of the night cleaning their house, they're sleeping or something, or yeah. they will co come back in the morning, they will have two hours of cleaning as fast as they could, but like, but well, you clean what you can. And Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, well, we all know that like some locations oh, clean yeah. more than others. Yes. Yeah, others, yeah. so, so. I've cleaned so many locations. There's been a couple of places that I've gone to. I'm like, I should literally charge you a cleaning fee. <laughs> I just fucking disinfected your kitchen. I just swept your floor. Like I swept the living room, like, but you, we, you do that. Oh I do that God. regardless. Now I bring my own bedding. Oh and, yeah, I've always I, done that. I did my own bedding, and I always also like have we have like cleaned the the counter and stuff if they have sex on it or the couch, the yes. couch. Yes. Just like, yeah. After you've done it, but when you oh, we, show up, no, we, I do it after and before. Yeah, when yeah. I show up and I have to disinfect the house because yeah. it's fucking filthy. That's when I'm just like, yeah, come on. Yeah, it's like some some I talk to girl like it's just in there like it's just like, oh you want me to like shoot on that bed? Yeah, but they have makeup here, so it's clean now. <laughs> it's good. No more makeup. What is that like? What I remember I shot at a location once, and there was this like big circular uh, red couch. Yeah, and there was just these and it was cool looking. But there was these suspicious white spots all yeah. over it. And the location owner kind of proudly said, oh, yeah, Jim Powers loves that couch. He shoots on that all the time. I'm like, we're not shooting on that couch. <laughs> if Jim Powers loves that couch, I ain't fucking touching it because I know what he shoots. <laughs> oh, no, he's just like, it, yeah, sometimes it's just like, yeah, sometimes you just like touch something. And you're like, oh, let's just go out of my hand. I don't even want to look at it. <laughs> I've started bringing cleaning gloves to yeah. some sets sometimes because they're – yeah. My assistant do that. She, yeah. She's funny. She had those gloves and she yeah. go clean everything. Yeah. And yeah. It. Yeah. Sometimes you need to do that. So how does um, the porn, working in the porn industry compare to working in the mainstream industry as a writer and director? Do you prefer it? What are the main differences? It's, I will say that I like, I like, I like the porn industry better because mm -hmm. it, it allowed me to create stuff fast. And that's and I'm the person that I like to I like to create fast and like see the result like like I have like I can call any studio and said that's what I want to do and he said okay we liked it we send you the money in two months and like you get you do it in two months three yeah. months later four months later it's release you move to the next project in the mainstream could take ten years to do one movie. Yeah. You know, like I will be like, oh, I want to do that movie. And you will approach some producer and they'd be like, oh, you find a producer. OK, cool. I, I like that. So now let's let's ask money to write the script to, or if you write the script. OK, now let's shop the script around to studios and let your studio get it. So, OK, we have it. Now we need to raise the money to build that movie. And now you raise the money. So now you're already two, three years in the process. If you're lucky that it get picked up right away. OK, two, three years. And now you're shooting. And now you edit that. And after that, if you do independent film, now you want to do the festival circuit. So now you do the festival circuit. And after that, you finish the festival circuit. Now some distributor buy it, and now you will put it in theaters or in DVDs, depending on what you're doing. And now you're done with that movie, and now you start the process for another one. So it's just like, for me, it's too long. Yeah. By the end of it, you, like, hate your own movie. Yeah, you, you hate your movie. <laughs> and it's just, like, for me, I just want to create a movie and move on. And just, like, that's what porn give me. It's just, like, I can do everything I want most of the time and do it not fast, but meaning the, the turnaround for it is, is yeah. more fun. Yeah. That's, yeah, I, I agree. I would say that's the one thing that's nice about working in the adult industry is that, like, you can probably do whatever it is you want to do and you can do it fast. Yeah. And it's like, it, whereas there's so much red tape in the mainstream industry, because it's also like you got to, if you want to hire this star, they're on a movie for six months, you got to talk to their agent and their manager. And now it's like, you know, some of the girls have agents, but a lot of times you can just hit them up directly. Yeah. Even if you end up booking them through their agent, you'd be like, hey, do you want to do this? <laughs> you know, like you know them all personally. Yeah. So it's like a different story. Yeah, most of the time, like especially now, like I will just talk to a girl and listen, listen I have this this idea do you think you could be interested in that and yeah and it's okay so now can you think and after that we'll figure it out like stuff and after that we'll bring i will talk to the agent and it's like okay she, she told me that she's available those days is okay with you and i still do the process to the agent because it's important because they have the big picture of it mm -hmm. But like most of the time, I will start pre-start everything with her. Make sure that so when I talk to the agent, I already know that she's on board. I already know yeah. that what's her dates are 
off dates and everything and now i i finalized the, the contract with that yeah i've done that too you pretty much do all the work that the agent's supposed to do <laughs> because it's like you just can't sometimes some of them not all of them there's some wonderful agents out there but some of them like will not deliver the information like they, they just won't get it. the girl won't get it well like that, that's why i put most of the time i put the girls in the email yeah, I get, I get the, I get, I get their email, so I put it there, so make sure that everything is good. It's important to respect the process because it's just like it's, yeah, it's a job. Like, and if you know, it's process, but like, I understand totally your frustration. Sometimes I'm like, you just like, I, I used to have some like phone call, just like, oh, you booked that that model without talking to me. So, he was on set that day. I asked him if he's available on the 28th and like he's available. So I just book it. Do you really want me to call you when he's in front of me to ask for a question that I already know? I said, I give you the information. You have them now. You just you get like, the money. You get it. You get everything. Yeah. So just don't leave me alone when I'm doing And now they're doing that because like they, they understand that I respect the process and I will give them the money yeah. and I will not bypass the system. But it was, I will say at the beginning, like it was kind of friction that yeah. we have there because it, you need to, they don't know if you will try because some people will try to avoid to yeah. pay the agent fee or the agent and stuff. Yeah. Like I that. found that in the end, it is absolutely not worth it. And when I've been accused of trying to go around behind an agent's back, I'm like, you really think I'm going to like try to save a hundred dollars and like yeah. piss you off. So you never let me book any of your girls again. I'm like, you think I'm that? Yeah, it's just like, if it's a hundred dollars. It's a hundred dollars. Like, like, like it just, it just your fucking hundred dollars. It's yeah. like, it's fine. Um, how would you describe your style as a director? That's a good question. I don't know. I, I like a natural, I like something that it looks real, the natural. Even if I do horror, I just, I like stuff that like the girls, I, I like to, to have like some girls that you look at, like that you will be like, it's regular day type of thing. It's funny because I have girls like the other day, she said, just like, I was coming on set today and I bring all my jeans. And it's just like, it's, you're the only one who put me in jeans. It's just like, <laughs> yeah, put you in jeans. Or like, I don't put you in like booty shorts and fishnet. I never do that unless you place. <laughs> Bright, a, fucking you know, like hot green yeah. uh, fishnets a la Jules Jordan style. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, I don't do those. So like, it's just like a, a more natural. Yeah. My camera is like, it's very like, um, and hells and shake it's just shaking and meaning that you have kind of it feels like you're in the moment m yeah. the moment and everything is a lot of close up and stuff it's just like i don't go to a super wide that you see everything and mm -hmm. more like i show you and that's that's why i think people are frustrated by my style is because like i show you what i want you to see and not what like i don't show you the full thing so you watch what you like i show you what i like kind of mm -hmm. thing so maybe that's what like some some people could not like that my lighting is very natural so like very minimal and like it's just like i don't like to over lit the scene if i don't have to mm -hmm. sometimes it's sometimes you also like you you end up doing a a studio or a product that they already have like a, a mood board or like I already have like a production vision so you have to follow yeah. their production vision yeah but like when you hire but like if I doing a feature most of the time it will be natural lighting uh, it will be like a strong shadow because mm -hmm. I like I like the you know like the shadows and the lights and I like to see like something that you really you will see from your own eyes you know you you never get in a room unless it's an hospital that everything is perfectly lit. Mm -hmm. it's for it's me, funny. It you and I are so different. <laughs> and it's so funny because I'll work with gaffers and I'm like, I don't like that fucking nose shadow. I don't like those eyelash shadows. And they're like, but that's like the item. I'm like, I don't want that. And then they're like, what the fuck? They got to like move the light closer to me. And I know that they get frustrated because, you know, I think, I think also too, because I come from a photography beauty yeah. lighting background, I'm used to like kind of making sure that the shadows fall exactly where I want them. Um, but yeah, even in video, I'm always like, I'm like, don't you give me fucking cross shadows? I'm like, I'll kill you. And no, they're like, for me, it was like, it was that when I started the business, <laughs> I was like, I was very hard on my camera guy because I, they cannot open the camera more than 1.8. And if I'm, if I'm a good day, I will say two, but like, that's the, wow. the that's oh, the man, big, that focus that, is, that, that that's is the tough. biggest that you can do. And like a lot of camera guy didn't make it. They're just no. like, and, and for me, the first thing I, I like zoom, but mm -hmm. I don't use them because I feel that he makes the camera guy lazy in a sense mm -hmm. that like, he's like, oh, I need a close up of the pussy, so I zoom. But if you cannot zoom because you have a fixed lens, you have to move your ass and go get the shot. So by moving your ass and go get the shot, 
you will have to reframe your thing and now you will give me a good frame because I know you can't give me a good frame. It's just that you have a zoom now, you just zoom to get it. Love my zoom lens. But like, I love but, my zoom lens. I love like, just staying right there, just going. Shh. Yeah, but like for for me, I, I forced them to go get the yeah. shot just by not having that. And so, so it was very hard because I was like, I don't use zoom. I don't. I, I use zoom for like the only time I used this zoom was for Sally Mae because like we did a little snap zoom. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So like, so that's the only time we use zoom my 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 movie. But normally it's just like a all fixed lens and like two is the max I will go. Normally I like to be between. 1.8, 1.4. Do you normally shoot? How many cameras do you normally have shooting at, at one time? Uh, two cam, depending. Like uh, when it's a feature, we do the story with one camera, and we do the sex with two camera. Mm -hmm. uh, when it's a, you know, like girls wear, for example, it's two camera or Misa. Most of the time, it will be two camera. But like when it's a, if I do a feature for Misa, it will be like two, uh, one camera for the story and. The sex would be two camera. Yeah, that makes sense because you don't want to interrupt the sex as much to get like a different shot because the, yeah. that, that's that's what I try to do most of the time. It's not not block the, the sex and having two camera floating around. Yeah. For for the I have like for my problem with the two camera for dialogue, it's the fact that like you compromise the lighting to fix yeah. for two camera. Yeah. And, and I feel that sometimes it's this, unless you do mother daughter and like you have the mm -hmm. same angle and you just do it pulls up in the large. But if you do like, uh, if you do crisscross, I feel that like you, now you want to have the perfectly lit for that camera. Mm -hmm. You want to have perfectly lit for that camera. So now you have to create two, two lit and sometimes you will compromise. The, oh, but the angle will be better here. But if you're here, you will be in the shadow. You shadow so next. Yeah. So now you will move a little bit on the left and now you don't have the shot that you really want to have because you now you compromise yourself for the lighting. Right, right. So, so that's why I'm kind of like, I don't really like two camera for like features and mm -hmm. stuff. That is, I, I want to have more like stuff. But other than that, it's just... It's, uh, well, what's nice too about having the one camera is that, especially if you're not editing, you're kind of forcing the edit a certain way that you want to do yes. it. Yes. I found that my problem has been in the past, I've gotten too much coverage. And then when they edit it, they use shots that I didn't yeah. really want them to use. And then I'm like not happy with the final outcome. Yeah, you, that, that's that's also like sometimes you will hear this on set and I will just like, and I will look at that camera and say, I know you want to have a white, but I'm not giving you because I don't want you to use it. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> just like, it's like, so like, I just like, cause I, I it is like, we sometimes we like, we say, oh, that would be nice. No, don't get, or if you give them a white, it will be, 10 seconds because I only want you to use it for when she walk in, like when she walk inside the house. And after that, we cut, we do the rest in tight. So you don't have, you don't give me a white of her walking all the way down and just, yeah. like, you know, I just yeah. don't want to have that. Um, you've mentioned that you love horror yeah. and you love incorporating horror into your movies. How do you make a porn movie with horror elements in it and still keep it sexy? I think horror is sexy, so that's my problem. Oh, okay. So, like, you know, I like, I like, I, I feel that, like, and perfection and, and, and weird things are pretty. So, like, so that's why for me that works. I know that some people, like, I remember, like, reading the comment when we did Grind. I don't know if you see Grinder, but, like, uh, we, Tommy Pistol, we, we basically we create a fake uh, head like he you don't he's bald from the top and oh, you have yeah, blonde, yeah, blonde, yeah. blonde hair and you have like a Mr. T type of mm -hmm. mustache and he's just like he looks terrible and <laughs> it is like but I like it he looks natural he looks like fucking your dad fucking your mom in the kitchen that's what he looks like um, yeah that was, looks like in my family so like, <laughs> so, so, so like uh, so like it would be like so I, I think it's more natural but people are like but it's porn we need to to have but why do you have you need to have this pretty like why do you, you cannot find i don't know you cannot find sexy two people having sex even if they're not the supermodel you just yeah. like i feel that it's just like that that's the thing that like for me i, I feel that everything is sexy but i really like sex like something that is weird or like like uh, not horrific but it kind of like not necessarily pretty uh for our really really horror it's just like the only time we did R and sex was the bargain, mm -hmm. when we have a demon like Tommy having sex with a demon. Um, it was special. I think like the the day that we. It's funny because you know you you work in a business for so long. You you do your own camera or like. Uh, or something? Uh, 
It depends. I used to only shoot my own camera, and then once I got a budget for an extra cameraman, I I stopped doing that. <laughs> that that's the same thing. I <laughs> but I used to have to shoot everything myself because I didn't have the budget for a camera person. Yeah. So, so so when you don't do it and you do your, yeah, I'm looking at the sex, but I don't really look at the sex. I'm just like, okay, this is like happening. I'm, I make sure that the 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 consent moment, like she said no pussy and a finger and all that yeah, stuff yeah, is yeah. not happening. But I don't really look at the lighting. But I'm not looking deep. Like, and I have people like your crew member, like set design or lighting, you know, like they just leave the room and just came back if I call them, you know, yeah. PA or stuff. Isn't it so funny how we're making porn movies? The most important thing supposedly about the porn movie is the sex. And that's the time. That's the part that we spent the least amount of time on. Yeah. It was like, <laughs> it's two people fucking. They know what they're doing. Yeah, like, exactly. That's the thing. It's like, okay, I'm going to reinvent the fucking wheel, man. Like, Yeah. I remember, I remember like doing a scene. The girl was terrible at giving a blowjob. And I have to tell her how to give a blowjob. I never give a fucking blowjob. How the fuck am I supposed to directing you how to give a blowjob? Just I had like, to do that once too. Oh yeah. yeah. You're just like, okay, so grab his dick, like get up and down. Okay, now lick the tip, just go. And then like, you're just like, and I'm like, did I really have to tell her how to give a blowjob right now? Okay. And now you go there like, for like that. I think it's good. Do you like that? Yeah, okay, it's good. He likes it. They're just like, <laughs> look at him right now. Just thinking you're like, <laughs> really? <laughs> it's like I always said to people, like, if I have to direct you how to do sex, you know, I the wrong business. Yeah, yeah, just that's like, true. Or, or I will not hire you ever again. It's yeah, just like, seriously, just that's the only thing. Acting, I understand. You know, I'm like, you know, yeah. you know, in the business to act or something. So if I ask you to cry or be funny, it's like, I understand, and I have to coach you and mm -hmm. tell you and give you tricks and give you chance and and then maybe you won't. As some girls that I had, they were not very good when I worked with them the first time, and now at five, six time later, they're very good at it. Mm -hmm. You know, so like it's, it takes time, but sex. It's should be like the reason why you're in porn. Yeah. Just like unless that I that should ask, be the one thing you're good at. Yeah. Just like unless I ask you to do something completely out of your, you know, like thing that you're comfortable with or like mm -hmm. you don't do that often. But like the basic I'm shooting I don't shoot BDSM. I don't I rarely BDSM or stuff like that. It's my stuff it's pretty like people fucking on a couch or on a bed in this five, seven position that we always use. So mm -hmm. you should be capable of doing that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, like if I have to tell you how to eat a pussy, you you should like <laughs> reconsider your your work <laughs> path really. <laughs> what is the movie that you've made that you think you're the most proud of? Mm. It's it's very hard to pick. I have a lot of movies that I'm really proud of. The 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 for different reason. Um, Grinder is a very movie close to me because it kind of like show my like because it, it, it's in the '90s when I was a teenager. Like the skateboard vibes. It's very it's not autobiographic, but it's it's kind of like my life. And at that time. It's a movie that I really want to do for years that I was kind of rejected and like and finally uh, get a green light by by adult time. So it was very important for me. Um, but it's the same thing for um, Under the Veil. Under the Veil, like, you know, Confession of a Sinful Nun was like a different movie. And, you know, Under the Veil is kind of like El Mariachi, Desperado, and Once Upon a Time in Mexico. So mm -hmm. basically, I did Confession of a Sinful Nun. It was my first movie. I was not really sure what I'm doing. Low budget movie, just like you do that. And we're not sure it will be successful, so we don't put too much money in that. We did Confession of a Sinful Nun too. that we put more money in it. It's more intense. The script is more dark. This, the thing where we go is crazy, but like we still need to follow the compliance because like it's just like credit card company and everything. So we need to be there. Yeah. And after that, we do Under the Veil. That Under the Veil was like, let's go all in on it. And like it just not all in. We create, we build like carry on and build a church inside of like we had it was not a that, that's the i remember her the, showing me photos yeah, she the, was like i built a church for ricky greenwood like she yeah, was the, showing the, me what she made for you the, the worst part in her job it's like if you're good at it people don't notice it and yeah. that's what i always said to you it's like people she was so good at building the church that 
everybody thought that we shot in a church. Yeah. It was not a church. It was like a living room. <laughs> <It was> just, <laughs> just, the girl, the guy used to have like a, a glass window look like a church. Mm-hmm. And we bought some pews and we just created a church inside of like this guy living kind of living room. It wasn't that place in downtown LA. Was it was it? a town in downtown LA. Yes. Oh my God. That's where I shot adult film school. It's it, like right by Skid Row. Yeah. yeah it's Oh yeah. It was, it was awful. Like, yeah. it, like it was Skid Row. I, I didn't know they have like ghetto blasters and the stuff and listening yeah. to music every yeah. fucking day. It was like, it was awful to shoot. It was. Yeah. Like, no, we would have hard. to go down and we would ask them, we would bribe them to not blast their music. Yeah. And so then instead they just came back like at the same time every day and blasted their music so that we would pay them to leave. <laughs> yeah. It was like they like caught on to us. Yeah, it was that was um that was rough. Yeah, no, it was it And there was, was no air conditioning we shot in there in nothing. the summer. We actually yeah. brought this was the great thing about working for Playboy TV. We brought in like a huge air conditioning like machine. I'd never heard of one of these before, but you can get like a big machine that has these long tubes like Tubes that are literally like 50 feet long. And we'd snake the tubes up to the second floor through the house and would just blow uh, cold air on you. It was like it, a, it was like an octopus. Oh, no. We like, it was us, crazy. I was For us, it was like hell. Yeah. It was like, it was like it, it, you know, like if you believe in God, it's just God was punishing us yeah. for doing that because like it was like, it was like summertime, yeah. one of the most oddest week of the summer. We are inside. We need to keep the glo- the door closed because it's the skid rule. So you the sound, the music, everything. Uh, it's a church, so we have tons of candle everywhere lit, and the girls are in those fucking huge cotton like like nun outfit that I just like it's just like the girls is like they have, they used to wear like they have to wear socks and underwear so like can we just we don't see them can you just remove them when we, I will put them on when we do sex because I just like at this point I I want to have less clothes as possible yeah. but it was like it was like the girls were like like it was awful for them it's just yeah. like because it was so hot we we have water and fan and everything but it's just like it's no way that you can like yeah. you dress like you're going and you're living in the winter and like you're yeah. going outside it was like it was awful and you know how hard i ought that place can be yeah you need the air conditioning octopus which i think was like twenty thousand dollars yeah <laughs> but playboy had the money so they spent it thank god but even then like i mean you couldn't have it running all the time because it was no. so noisy so we would turn it off We'd shoot for like a little bit, and then after like thirty minutes, we'd be like, and we'd just turn, and everyone would just stand in front of it like this. Yeah, if we have fan horrible. like that, some fan that goes like, oh, and you just stay there. <laughs> or, or we have some break outside. It was it was colder outside than inside. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's oh my god. What's some of the um like craziest things that have happened to you on set, or like worst days on set? Worst day on set. Don't have like bad days. I have like, I think I have like some moments that like sometime with talents. I remember time I had like some like tension, you know, like for like for like some stuff. But it, it really rare. I will say like, I don't have bad. And maybe I'm lucky. I don't have really bad. I don't have one that it came out like the only bad experience, and it wasn't really a bad experience. It was just like a waste of time that we had on Grinder. The pool was supposed to fr- when you know like when they they, they go to the pool. It's, oh, it's December and like uh, it's supposed to. It's cold. I'm not jumping in the pool. Oh no, the pool is heated and the thing is good. And so I, the pool was supposed to be warm. And when I arrived there, she's like uh, that location lady that you take care of all the porn industry. Didn't tell the owner that. What a surprise! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> didn't tell the owner that it needs to be warm. So when I text the owner because I know the owner, I said like. Make sure you sure did you start you sure the pool is is warm? She said, Oh, I will start it now. So like it's no way your pool will be fucking warm. Like it's gonna take like eight hours. Yeah, more than yeah. that. It's a huge pool. So like so it's, it's cold. So like so we managed to to push and push and push and do everything around until like later in the day. But like the pool was still 64, 65 when like we get we get to the, the shoot. So I said, people said, do you think you can jump in, you know, like and do the, 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 when they throw you in the pool and stuff like that. And you guys jump and we just come out and we got done. And the guys were, they did it. And they said, oh, yeah, well, that's not that bad. And so let's do, let's do some dialogue. They have some dialogue to do. And I was like, and Maya Wolf was like, 
and so their their like, teeth are clapping, which is okay. Get out of the pool, guys. It's just like yeah, you cannot. I cannot have you in the pool at that. It's so fucking cold. It's just yeah. like you cannot be there. But like, I think that was the worst. That like I was like, and I cut that pretty fast because I was like, it's it's a, it's not okay to have them being the even if they they were a trooper nobody was complaining but it's just like it's just like was i would will, will probably if i was me i would be there i'm not jumping in that fucking pool yeah fuck that they're not fuck paying the, me for that. Just, I'm, for that i'm not jumping in it's it it's funny because every time i ask somebody about like on set stories it's always a location problem yeah it's, it's well, never the talent it's like never the script no. it's always the location i've had like such problems with locations yeah the location is always a bad problem the the talent, you know, like you have some moment that I have, like you know, like I'm not lying. It's just like I think the work that is in any workplace you will work, and I'm pretty sure you have model that you cannot stand, you know. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure it's vice versa. Some model cannot work with you, or cannot work with me, and this is like, and for me, I'm always that like, in a professional level. Unless you do something very shitty that you mean to someone, like mm-hmm. I saw your girl on set, like that's how she ended up on my no list. She's just like, uh, the girl was like, um, the girl was Texas Pettis, and she's like, she didn't take this, she's from Germany, and like, she's like, she's looking at the script and she tried to learn the script, and and um, she looked at me and she's like, Can you help me with those words? She's like, are you serious? My accent is probably worse than yours, so like, yeah. I cannot help you with those words. But I asked the other model, said, can you help her with, you do the line with her and can you help her to pronounce the name? Say, that's not my job to help the other model to pronounce the word perfectly, no. And I was like, you're right, it's not your job, you're right, you just say, just stay here and I will have someone else doing it. Thank you, I appreciate that. And just like, yeah. Wow. But like, you're yeah. done. Yeah. Just like, I'm sorry, but like, you need to be nice with other people. That's yeah. like, it's just like, there's no reason that you'll be mean as, as yeah. much mean to even, I get maybe you had a bad day or everything, but like, it's just, you need to be nice. You just, yeah. that's the Manners. only thing. That's the only thing that I ask. It's just like, don't treat other people like garbage. Yeah. It's just like, it, it. yeah, the worst is I've had, um, a couple of models, or maybe only like one or two that treated my crew badly. Like they were nice to me. Yeah, they always. But they talked down to like my PA, and I was like, no, absolutely, like no, you're you're done. I'll never shoot you again. Yeah, that's the worst. That when that happened, I remember that girl. They didn't. She didn't talk to me. I was my beginning. I think fight for fifth or sixth movie or something. Mm -hmm. And she never talked to me at all. Like the old day. She's just like she talked to my camera guy because she knows him. She talked to everybody, but she's like, when I talked to her, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's just like whatever. And Sheree Deville came because she did the second scene of the day. And she's just like, and she's like, oh, my God, Ricky, I was so happy to work with you, blah, blah, blah. And she gave me a hug. Sheree is always. Yeah, she's mm, lovely. She's lovely. So, like, she's like, give me a hug and blah, blah, blah. And she's like, my God, congratulations for your nomination for a movie. It was like, I love the movie. I saw it. It was great. And the girls are sitting in the work. She's like, my God, like, best, the best, like, movie and stuff. It's so great. It's like, I'm so proud of you. And the girls listen to that and after that she, oh, congratulations. I saw that movie. It was very good. And now she starts sucking my ass, kissing my ass. She's just yeah. like, no. She's like, now oh, she's, this guy's important. Yeah, now, oh, now I, I can talk realize. to him. You're just like, you're just like, and I was like, it's too late. You're yeah. just like, you're just, you, you dig yourself so much all day. It's just yeah. like, I still work with that person because like, it's, it's the business of like, yeah. you know, like, in business, I think it's just like you hire me to do a job. I will do it. I don't have. I don't need to be your friend. I don't need to be your. I need to be nice with you, and and everything is okay. But I don't need to be over nice with you. Mm-hmm. you know, right? I just like you came here. Just your makeup chair. This is your script. If you ask me a question, I will answer. I will get like what you need to do the scene, but I will not be over nice with you because it's, you know like the way I don't like the way you treat people or the way you are or act or something. But like I will still work with you. Yeah. But like, but like, unless unless you do something very bad. Yeah. But so actually, that brings up another question that I have for you that um, I know sometimes like male directors struggle with. Like, do you ever have issues with like dating the talent or talent wanting to date you? Like, how how's your what's your perspective on that? Oh, well, I'm dating a talent, so like, it's just like. Okay. It's just <laughs> that, that. But, but does that ever become problematic for you? That, that, it's problematic in the relationship mm-hmm. in the relation it's also problematic that like uh, she's talented so mm-hmm. like so there's like so like 
for me, I want to use her because I know she can do stuff, but I feel that you don't want to also use her all the time. So like people were like, oh, it's like you, you, it's, it's, you favor her over other people mm -hmm. or does she have like special privilege or stuff like that? It's just like, so, so you try to be like, so, so now I'm trying to do like, for example, when I work for any studio, I cannot, the rules that I have with her in the studio is that I cannot bring her up. Mm -hmm. So like, if you want me to work with her, it needs to come from the studio. Right. It cannot be come from me. Right. So that that's why I try to to like to do the stuff, you know, mm -hmm. like, uh, and and they always come from the studio. It never come from because I try to separate. You don't want to play that part that like, oh, of course she had the part. She she slept with the director or something. So you yeah. try, and and for me it's it's also hard for her because like it's also like that's what people say. Right. You know, like, oh, she get nominated. Of course she slept with the director and just yeah. like just that's not, we have nothing to do. I don't talk to. Yeah. AVN or XBiz or anybody else to have her nominated or anything, but like people like that's the thing. I, sometimes I wish that she was not good, so like I would, <laughs> I would be like, "Well, you're not good. I cannot book you." But like it's just like she's good, so like I like to book her and I like to work with her. But like that's probably part of what like attracts you to her too is that you know she's talented and she's you know you have to have a certain level of like intelligence to be able to yeah you know. Be good at your job. Yeah, be good at your job and be able to. It's but it's 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 create conflicts. It's for mm -hmm. sure because it's sometimes it's also her as a, as like a, a talent. She's just like, oh, you're doing that crazy movie. Why I'm not in it? It's just like, you know, like it's just like we need to, you know, like that. And sometimes sometimes it's frustrating because you feel that you have like you get put aside because you're dating the director. So like, you yeah. Feel, yeah, yeah, I yeah. see, I could see you how see, it can go both ways. Yeah, you just see like, okay, they, we don't want to show that to other people that you always book your girlfriend or something. So now yeah. we don't booking her for that movie. And it's like, even if she's we perfect for it, we just skip her. It's just like, yeah. like okay. It's just like, I feel bad for her, but it's just like, I understand too, you know, but like, but is, but is it, is it, I understand it's, I understand the, the, the relation that you have but like but like even when i was not dating a person you know like you also like you also go with like and that's why i said to people sometime when you're friend like i'm a friend with charlotte stokely and like of course like when we was just like I, she was in my first movie and she was like when i was nobody she accepted to do that and after that we build a relationship and a friendship and now just like, of course, if I'm doing a great movie and I'm like, I'm writing and I'm like, oh, oh, Shia would be great for that yeah. movie. And you put her in the movie and like, and after that, you call her and you book her. Yeah. We're not dating. We never date, but we just, we're yeah. happening to be good friends. So it's kind of the same kind of like privilege that you get mm -hmm. that like, being a friend with a director and like other people that you have. Sometimes some director, maybe, I don't know if you ever had that, but you have a muse, the girls that you really yeah. like. And like, and now you wrote stuff for her all the time and you'll see her all the time or some people that you know that they're good at their job and then the, the work is just like, you know, for me, it's something, all that. So that for her, she had the fact, of course, the fact that she's closer to the director, she had access to some information maybe that it could be problematic, but it's, it's, it's very hard to manage that. How is it for you? Does she work with guys? Yeah, she worked with guys. Yeah. How is it for you, her working with other guys? Because, like, one kind of feedback that I see so much on my podcast is listeners who cannot comprehend the concept of, like, having a girlfriend or a wife who also has sex with other people. Like, it's just, like, blows people's minds. So, you know, I think working in the adult industry, we see things differently. Yeah. So how does it, how does that work for you? Do you guys ever have issues with that? I think, I think it's the thing. The thing is like, you have to understand it's just like, it's for me, it's just like, I see that as a work. Mm -hmm. So, so like, it would be very weird on my hand to be like, oh, you are go fuck people. That's my work. And it'd be like, woman, you fuck those people. That's my work. It's work. I and mean, that's the yeah. work. When you fall in love with me, when you decide to date me, I was doing that job. Yeah. So, but we also do see a lot of girls who end up with even male performers and then the male performer makes them stop doing boy girl, but the male performer continues to shoot with other girls. Yes. So like you do see like that weird complex. Yeah. Jealousy I, come up. It's hypocrisy. It's yeah, just like totally. it's just it's just like because you you the thing is also that it's also depending on the person. Mm -hmm. Like if you're a very confident person and you don't you don't like doubt of yourself, 
just like if you're a shitty person you treat her like garbage of course you don't want to go shoot with other people because like you know that she will fall in love with maybe someone else and you will dump your ass yeah but if you treat her well <laughs> yeah. if you if she's happy in your relationship and you have like it's you know like everything's good she it's her job she will see it as a job and she will not go see her and you don't have to be f scared mm -hmm. like for me i decide to live my life with no jealousy at all mm -hmm. And it's just like that's for me the important part in a relationship is, tr is trust. Yeah. And if you lose that trust, now that came jealousy. Yeah. And for me, if if I lose trust and then jealousy came, I'm out of the relationship because I can't. You know, I work my life like I work a lot, and I and I have moments, and I don't want to be on set being like, oh my god, she's shooting with this guy right now. Maybe I'm assuming that he gave her an orgasm and I can't forget. And now you, your head is fucking <laughs> going everywhere. Yeah. And just like, and you're just concentrating on your work or like, or she's like, oh, I am going to to with my friends to a party tonight. And I'm like, okay, I'm staying home. I'm staying home, relaxing, watching TV. I don't want to stay home being like, oh my God, how many guys she's blowing in the bathroom right now? And just like, <laughs> how the fuck, how can you live your life like yeah. that? It's just like, it's just for me, it's just getting like, I will be insane by the end of the yeah. the month or something. It's just like, it's, um, it's not fun. So I decided to just like, I trust you no matter what you do. Yeah. Do your stuff. I, I trust that you're smart enough to don't do bad things and everything. And I don't even worry about it at all. Yeah. And watch TV and it's just like, yeah. it's like But that. it's like, that's, I mean, it's easy to say, I think that you decided that, but I think what it comes from is a sense of self-confidence, right? That you have to have. And the fact that you chose, the person that you're with is somebody that you chose because there's somebody that you have that trust in, that inherent trust in. Because I yeah. think, you know, we see people in bad relationships all the time. And, you know, one of like my favorite phrases is like, well, you have a bad picker, like your picker's wrong, like you're dating the wrong, you're like, oh, why does this always happen to me? This guy always cheats on me here. I always end up with guys who are like this. It's like, you're fucking choosing the wrong people. Yeah. Like, that's what it is. And a lot of that might have to do with yourself and your sense of self-worth and you attracting people into your life that are going to treat you badly because you don't actually believe that you deserve better. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's, it's well phrased, but it's hard. It's hard to to realize that. Yeah, it's hard. And to, I think that comes with age too. Yes, like how I was in bad relationship when that, but it's not yeah, true because I had I had a long term relationship for a long time. But before and after that, I had like the between. It was like it was terrible. It was yeah. Just like, just like you you get like, but it, for me, it's just like it's the thing. It's just like trust came up and go it's just like if you lose the trust you lose everything I'm, yeah. I'm i'm not i'm not because i don't want to spend my time thinking about it yeah i, I just like it's over yeah it's just like it's i don't even want to have two two seconds of doubting of like you will be faithful or you will be like respectful or anything it's just like if any if i if that doubt came the relationship yeah. is over. Yeah. Just for me, even if I love you and in yeah. really for a long time, it's just I can't I don't want to have to think about that. Yeah. When there's smoke, there's fire. Yeah. Um, do you have any projects coming up this year that you're really excited about? I have a couple of projects coming. I already like the, the funniest part is just like I work for like different studio and like different I, studio. I had, noticed like, that when you said because obviously you work for adult time and then yeah. you mentioned digital playground. So yes. I used to do that a lot too. I used to work for all different studios yeah. and it's so I thought it was actually really good because I learned because everybody works differently. So I learned like what different people like, and I feel like the experience was was good for me. But a lot of people only work with one studio. So yeah. is that? Do you find that difficult? Do people like try to rein you in with contracts ever? I no, I don't. I think the contract time for a director is over. Mm -hmm. I think they don't want to be attached to someone that is just like, you know, you want to be able to like terminate them if you do something wrong you know, like <laughs> yeah or just basically ghost them yeah, if you're not under yeah, contract you can yeah. just be like sorry i don't have any work for you this yeah, month. exactly yeah. yeah so like you don't you don't have to be like but they have i have understanding with most of them mm -hmm. you know like they said like gamma for example idle time they just give me you do this amount of feature this amount of scene and that's the priority and after that i put that in my calendar and after that misa give me a certain amount of scene and all those guys door sale and all those guys so like and i i build this big puzzle and i move piece around um so and I sometimes I had new stuff. So Digital Pigon is basically uh it's um the reason why I do Digital Playground the most part of it is that when they approached me, uh they approached me before the pandemic. They were the first one to approach me and the pandemic happened and like because uh, at that time I was exclusive with Malhai 
and Digital Playground approached me to do that, but the pen that I wrote a script for them and everything was good. And I was super excited because like my, one of my best friend, Robbie D was like uh, there and I was like, oh, I will finally do the same thing as you do. I will go to Digital Playground and like, I will do a movie better than you did. And I was joking with him and everything. And like, uh, and the pandemic happened and like the contract, the, the, the movie never happened. And I think Browser Mind Geek was like the last company to came back to shoot after the pandemic. Yeah, they were. Yeah, so like, so like, I was like, so I was home and I was working a little bit for Mile High, and Misa X approached me and said, "Listen, we have a lot of stuff to shoot." So I started shooting exclusively with Miss Mile High and Misa X, and never. And after that, idle time came, and so that that story never. Develop. There's no mm -hmm. playground. Never develop. And um, they approached me a few months ago, like I think in November. Uh, someone there gives them your call and says, "Listen, uh, you had this project that you want to do with us uh, back in the day. Uh, we're, not, we're not sure want to do that, but like we will maybe want to work with you on another project." And what happened during before the pandemic and now? Uh, Robbie die, mm -hmm. so um, I agreed to do the movie um, in exchange of giving him. It's an homage to Robbie D. So basically, it's just like it's my way to say thank you to him. And like, so I I made a movie. His favorite movie. He had a favorite movie that he was talking to me about all the time. That he was his favorite movie. So I tried to do an homage to that movie. So like, I'm oh. hoping that. It will work out well. So. That's a really emotional. That's very emotional. Yeah. So that's why, like that. That's that's how bring me to digital and like working. And they're very nice people to work with. They're a very good company. And, yeah, Mind Geek's great. Yeah. So like, so like, it's just like, hopefully, maybe other stuff will develop in the future. I think we we work well all together. But like, we'll see after that movie. But that's the main reason why I accept to do because I don't accept like especially a huge project like that. I don't have. Uh, a lot of time to yeah. to do that, but like this, I think this one was very important. So like, yeah. I make some room in the yeah. in the in the schedule for that. So. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. I I think I may have met Robbie like once or twice, but I didn't really know him. So I'm really sorry for your loss. No, he, he, thank you. He, he was like, he was a very good guy for for me. I don't know, like you know, it's it's always it's always in this industry. He's just like you say, oh, he was a good guy. No, he was an asshole. But like for me, he was a good guy. <laughs> everybody has their experience. Yeah, everybody has their experience. For me, and I don't see people say Robbie was an asshole. But I mean, you know, every time you bring someone, you always someone came with story that had bad happened yeah. to them. But like for me, Robbie was great. It was like uh, uh, we bound like like. Anyways, it wasn't when I met John Blit uh, the first time. He asked me the first meeting in June. I think it was like the one, the first one that I said I cannot do and call me in August. When we talk, he asked me, he said like, uh, oh, if you ever my production manager, what, what would you will do? And I was just like, I said like, the best director in the business is Robbie D. So like, but yeah. he, he's under contract with Digital Playground and just like work for them. So he never worked with people under than that. So I don't think it's possible. I said, no, as a matter of fact, he's not under contract anymore. So like, so like when I came back in August, he told me that he hired Robbie D and he's the Robbie will be developing this new line with me. So, so I was like, I was like excited because it was like, oh my God, I watched all his movie when I was a kid yeah. and like a teenager and stuff. So like, oh my God, this is like, I was like, we'll talk to him. So I talk on the phone and he was like, he was like, didn't treat me like I was a fucking asshole or like knew it was this new kid who don't know the business at all. Yeah. It was just like he will explain to me things if I if I do things wrong. He will explain to me things and like he will like her. Um, and we bound on like movies. We both love movies. So he was like, oh, "Did you see that movie?" And it's like we just go over. And um, the first time I came for like a, um, I met him. When I came the first time to shoot the uh, Confession of a Sinful Nun, because I have to also to meet other people, so I meet him for the first time, and we talk, and we go eat the restaurant, and like when I came back in January for the ex biz, uh, he asked me, "So you want to stay at my house?" So I stay at his house, and like and like, uh, and he was in, and, and after that, we just became a good friend. I moved like when I moved to LA, uh, I'm, my apartment was like, I think like. What two minutes from his house? So it's just like I was like I move in the same 
neighborhood that he has so we can go we go we see each other all the time and stuff and it was like uh yeah it was it was it was very nice he always helped me with like if i have issues he will tell me how to like to work with just like i remember like when for me it was a huge deal when i did um talk derby to me it was a huge deal because stoya was in the movie and it was like i was a huge fan of stoya and he and he used to direct her all the time so he's like oh He's just like, you have certain things to do and everything will be fine. And she's a great person. And he would give me some pointers and stuff and like uh, how to, 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 because it's just like, it's not the same thing when you work with a new girls or the girls new and you were a superstar like Stoya. So yeah, she's like, she's like, like still, you know, like I always say that you have stars and you have porn star. And Stoya, yeah. Stoya is, from my opinion, a porn star. So it's just kind of like, it's a different ball game dealing like you know you don't deal with angela white the same way you deal with the girl that is in the business for two years you know? yeah there's a different way to to handle those type of people yeah and that not they're not they're not picky or like and that's someone i met but it's just just like it's it's a different you know like i don't know you need to be there to understand the, you know the, the thing so like and so you give me some pointers and everything and yeah it was like uh it was hard it was it was a hard It was like uh, when I win the award, the best director is like it was sad because he was not there to see yeah. the the yeah. final <laughs> the final link, you know. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I feel like somewhere out there, he's proud of you. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Well, Ricky, thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming on. Um, it was really great. Thank you. Um, and congratulations on all of your successes and your future successes. And um, you know, you just keep building out that shelf. I'm sure you're going to keep putting more and more awards on it. <laughs> you're going to have to keep getting bigger and bigger space. <laughs> I have to keep the cats away from it. They like they like <laughs> to dump it on the floor. It's so like they dump a couple of shit. <laughs> Yeah. Can you tell everybody where they can find you on social media? Uh, if, on Instagram, it's x underscore Ricky underscore Greenwood underscore x for Instagram. And for Twitter, I think it's Ricky Greenwood x in okay. one word. And I don't have TikTok or any other stuff. What? You don't no, have TikTok? You're no, not doing stupid dances? No, I don't do that. I just <laughs> like, uh, I only have TikTok when like my girlfriend sends me videos of like, uh, funny things that she find but i don't really use it no. yeah, yeah yeah tiktok's actually got some i resisted going on there for a long time and i only post pot clips from my podcast i don't even post on tiktok masha does yeah. but there's i get like great like recipes and like decorating ideas off of it so it's got its, it's got its uses besides stupid dancing yeah it's just for me i do i do instagram story or something yeah. and like when i send that to my girlfriend oh, i saw that on tiktok six months ago so i realized that they're late i guess on yeah. Instagram. So, <laughs> yeah. so now i need to be up to date so like yeah. so i'll have to look at tiktok <laughs> And you guys can find me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. Go to hollylinks.com for links to all of my uh, different social media handles and websites. And, of course, if you want to support this podcast and watch these interviews live, go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered. Thank you guys so much for being here, and I'll see you next week. <laughs>